Today I will show you a power renegade build for open world that will do tons of damage to the enemies within just a couple of seconds. And it will siphon a lot of health which will help you stay alive even in hard fights. This build will work very well for you for all kind of open world content, like when you are working on your story or account progression for example, and of course it will also work very well in open world events and metas and such. I will explain exactly in details how the build will work and also how you can use it effectively and I will also show you exactly what gear we are going to use and I will show you footage for the build in action. For the build, we have Devastation 2, 1, 3, and then Invocation 2, 3, 3, and Renegade 1, 3, 1. For the Legends, we are using the Legendary Renegade Stance and the Legendary Dwarf Stance. Now let's explain how this build works. And one of the most important components for this build will be Fury. By default, Fury in PvE will give you 25% critical chance. But because of this Grandmaster trait, Fury will apply an extra 25% critical chance. Which means when you have Fury now, you will get 50% extra critical chance. And from our gear, by default, we have 50% critical chance. Which basically means most of the time, if not all the time, you will be running with 100% critical chance, which will deal a lot of damage. And that is again because you are going to have a high critical damage. Fury is also going to help you use your sustain because we are running Relic of Zakiros, which will convert 4% of your critical damage into healing, but only when you have Fury. We get Fury from this trait, which will give us 3 seconds of Fury every 10 seconds, and we get an extra 4 seconds of Fury every 8 seconds when we do a critical hit, which again will be most of the time. So those two traits combined will give you a very high uptime of Fury. You also get an extra 5 seconds of Fury every 10 seconds when you swap legends in combat with this build. Vindication is one of the traits that got a rework with the latest balance patch and it's now very powerful. This is going to convert 1% of the damage into healing for every stack of the Kala's Fervor. And you will find yourself easily with the maximum amount of 5 stacks and so this is basically 5% of damage into healing. Add this to the 4% we get from the relic and your damage is now also going to give you a lot of heals. And later when I show you in the footage you will find how effective that will be. From the devastation line we have an effect called battle scars which will help you siphon health from enemies. And you can apply multiple stacks of that effect. And for every stack, you will siphon a small amount, but it adds up very quickly and it will help you a lot with sustain. Your main source for battle scars will be applying vulnerability to the enemies. And you will actually do that very often. This trait will apply 5 stacks of vulnerability on your first hit in combat. And from this trait, whenever you disable an enemy, you are also going to apply vulnerability. On top of that, Ice Razor Ire, which will be one of the main skills you will use all the time, will apply a lot of vulnerability. And Dark Razor Daring will not apply vulnerability directly. But because of this trait, anytime you will use it and interrupt enemies, which will be very often, you will also apply vulnerability, which will give you some battle scars and it will help siphon a lot of hills. And then your auto attack will apply vulnerability from your great sword, which will be your main weapon. Skill number 2 applies vulnerability. Now something I didn't mention about fury is here, skill number 3 on the great sword, it doesn't actually say that it applies fury, but it does. So this skill along with those other two traits, it will help a lot. There are other traits that will also help a lot with the damage, like the Adapt trait in Devastation, which will increase the damage you do by 20% for enemies that are above 80%. Basically what this means is, your first hit is going to be extremely bursty and it will be more than enough to get enemies killed most likely. And then all the damage you do will be increased by 5% and if you are running an offhand weapon, then you will get an additional 2%. But in our case we are not, so we'll only benefit from the 5%. And then from this trait, our vulnerability will be even stronger. By default, for every stack of vulnerability, you will do 1% extra damage and condition damage. But because of this trait, for every stack of vulnerability, you will do half a percent of extra strike damage. And then from this trait, you will do 10% more damage when your health is above 75%, which will be very often. And then you will do 10% more damage when you are under the effect of fury, which again will be pretty much all the time. And then you will get 5 stacks of might when you apply fury, which will be very often because of those two traits and because of your great sword skills. 
and of course might is going to help with increased damage a lot also this trait all for one got rework with the latest balance patch and on top of the protection it applies now whenever you summon any of your legends basically one of those renegade skills you are also going to get a 10% damage increase buff and from the brutal momentum trait we get a flat out 10% increase in critical chance this goes up all the way to 33% if your endurance is full and so this trait alone is a huge boost to our critical chance and it will help us get close to the 50% which is all we need because then we can apply fury which will give us 25% and then it doubles that from this trait to get an extra 25 so basically that means if we have 50% critical chance from our gear which we do and then have fury we will be running with 100% critical chance the entire time you will find yourself with a 50% critical chance from your gear if you have ascended if you are running exotic you will be a little bit below that but still you will be very close to 100% and you will gain all the benefits from the critical damage and the healing from it and all of that because we are going to have a very high base critical chance we actually don't need to invest in precision in our gear so for the armor we are going to have a full set of Valkyr with dead eye runes we will also have a full set of Valkyr for trinkets and we already mentioned that we are using relic of Zakiros previously and for the weapons to give ourselves a little bit more sustain we are going to use cavalier and the sigils will be sigil of accuracy and strength to get us to this 50% critical chance and we will do the exact same with a short bow also cavalier and we will also have accuracy and strength in it for the food we will use the butternut squash soup which will give us power and ferocity since we don't need the precision and with them we will use superior sharpening stones or you can use potent superior sharpening stones which are a little bit more cost effective and they will last for one hour for this specific character, I only have a tier 1 Jadebot core, which is all you need. However, of course, if you have higher, that will be preferable, because it will allow you to gain even more vitality and more health. Now, for the gear, there aren't that many sheep alternatives for Cavalier or Valkyr. And so you will just have to use the filters to get the cheapest options. So we go for level 80, and then for the rarity, we will choose exotic. And then Valkyr is power, vitality, ferocity. And then we go to the pieces we want to buy. So with the chest, here are the options. Just filter by the cheapest. And here is the cheapest Valkyr chest. And then you will do the same with all the other pieces. Same goes for the trinkets, accessories, amulets, and rings. But they are going to have a different name. Still, they will provide the same stats. For the weapons, we will do the same thing. We already have level 80 and exotic. We will just do power and then toughness and ferocity for cavalier. And then we go for greatsword, sword by the cheapest. And we have a cavalier greatsword here. And we will do the same thing for shortbow. And here is the cavalier shortbow. Remember that I have a guide that actually shows you how you can gear up any character from scratch, even cheaper than what you see in front of you now on the trading post, using stat selectable level 80 exotic gear and ascendant. You'll find the link for that guide in the description below. Make sure you go check it out. The dead eye runes and the accuracy sigils are not too expensive on the trading post. However, superior sigil of strength can be a little expensive for some of you. If that was the case, you can use the lesser version, which is major sigil of strength. As for the relic, Zakiros is extremely important for this build. And without it, you will feel the less heals, especially in hard fights. So I would highly recommend that you get it. But if you can't get a relic of Zakiros, then you have two choices. If you want more damage, you can use a relic of the brawler. Or if you want more sustain, you can use Relic of the Flock, which will give you extra healing and barrier when you use your healing skill. Now let's talk about how to use this build in action. Renegade and Greatsword will be your main weapon and your main legend. On your Greatsword, you always want to use your 2, 3, and 5. And from your legend skills, you will always want to use Ice Razor Ire. This is going to do a lot of damage and it will apply vulnerability which will increase your damage even more and it will also help you siphon health. You will only use Dark Razor Daring if you want to break bar or if you need a stun break because it's also a stun break. You can also use it to interrupt enemies if you found yourself under a little pressure and you want to give yourself some room. Completely ignore Razor Claw Rage because you will not benefit too much from the bleeding it will do and it will waste a lot of energy. We will also not use the elite skill that often. But your healing skill is actually very powerful and anytime you find yourself low in health, this is going to be very good. It will give you a big burst of heal at the beginning and then it will heal for every pulse and then it will heal at the end. And if you had another legend summoned, let's say for example Ice Razor Ire, and then use your heal, this will also give you some barrier. 
Citadel Bombardment is very good for damage, but it also has a high energy cost, so you will only use it if you have enough energy, otherwise just leave it aside and the rest of your skills I mentioned will be enough to kill enemies. You will only switch to Dwarf if you were very low on energy or if you needed the extra heal or the extra sustain because of Vengeful Hammers. Which is a very powerful sustain skill, because whenever you apply it, this will have rotating hammers around you like this, and it will decrease the damage and condition damage you take by 20%, which is significant. On top of that, those hammers will heal you as they hit enemies when they rotate. So especially if you have a lot of enemies surrounding you and you use that skill, not only it will reduce the damage, it will actually give you a very decent amount of heals. Short bow is only for range situations when you can't melee, and in that case, you will focus on your skill number 3 and skill number 4 only. You will use your skill 5 when you need to break bar or knock down enemies. And in metas and such, if you want to break bar, then forced engagement is very good for that because taunt and slow will both break bar. And then you can also keep using inspiring reinforcements with someone this road here ahead of you and this will keep giving stability for you and for your party. So for example let's say this will be very good for dragon storm where there's a lot of interrupts going on and so just keep spamming inspiring reinforcement it will give you a lot of stability and people will appreciate it. Remember that the buffs we get from the jade tech defensive protocol and offensive protocol are extremely useful in open world. And in the Wizard's Tower map, from the spawn waypoint, just start moving west until you find this Jade Tech Workbench. You will find this charging station, and once you interact with it, it will give you the full charges for your battery. Just interact with the defensive protocol, and you can do it instantly now, you don't have to wait. The defensive is going to increase your toughness and vitality by 150, and it will give you a bunch of boons once you enter combat. And then we will do the same thing for the offensive protocol. Charge your batteries again from the charging station, and then come here, interact with it. And the offensive is going to increase your power and condition damage by 150, and it will give you a bunch of offensive wounds when you get in combat. And so in one minute, you have given yourself those two buffs for 3 hours, which is a lot. And of course, it increased your stats and it will give you a bunch of boons in the fight to help. And don't forget this reinforced armor buff which will increase your armor and your health. You get it by interacting with any anvil or repair vendor in open world or cities and such. And then choose I need my armor reinforced or fix me up or something like this. Once you do, it will give you that buff which will stay with you for 12 hours. Having those three buffs combined is going to significantly help you with any build in open world. If you enjoyed this build and found this guide useful, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel to see more builds in the future. I will now leave you with some footage for this build in action in open world and for those of you who care about benchmark numbers, I will leave them in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next guide.